Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Wardog Sec, back with another video for you guys. In today's video, we are going to continue on with the Junior Penetration Tester Learning Path inside of TryHack Me, Introduction to Pen Testing Principles of Security. Learn the principles of information security that secures data and protects systems from abuse. Now let's go ahead and dive into it. Task 1, Introduction. The following room is going to outline some of the fundamental principles of information security, the frameworks used to protect data and systems to the elements of what exactly makes data secure. The measures, frameworks, and protocols discussed throughout this room all play a small part in defense in depth. Defense in depth is the use of multiple varied layers of security to an organization's systems and data in the hopes that multiple layers will provide redundancy in organization security perimeter. Let's proceed. Task number two here, the CIA triad. The CIA triad is an information security model that is used in consideration throughout creating a security policy. This model has an extensive background ranging from being used in 1998. The history is because the security information, information security, does not start or end with cybersecurity, but instead applies to scenarios like filing, records, storage, etc., consisting of three sections confidentiality integrity and availability cia this model has quickly become an industry standard today the model should help determine the value of data that it applies to and in turn the attention it needs from the business and that's what it looks like here All right confidentiality integrity availability you have to have a good balance of all of these the cia triad is unlike a traditional model where you have individual sections instead it is a continuous cycle whilst the three elements to the CIA triad can arguably overlap. It, if even just one element is not met, then the other two are rendered useless, similar to the fire triangle. If a security policy does not answer these three sections, it is seldom an effective security policy. Whilst the three elements to the CIA triad are arguably self-explanatory, let's explore these and contextualize them into cybersecurity confidentiality. This Element is the protection of data from unauthorized access and misuse. Organizations will always have some form of sensitive data stored in their systems to provide confidentiality is uh, to protect this data and parties that is not intended for. All right, so there's going to be a lot to read through here, so be sure to pause the video and read through the rest yourself here. I'm just going to read over some highlighted points inside of these sections here. All right, so confidentiality basically like talking about encryption here. Integrity. The CIA triad element of integrity is the condition where information is kept accurate and consistent unless authorized changes are made. It is possible for the information to change because of careless access and use errors in the information system or unauthorized access and use in the CIA triad. Integrity is maintained when the information remains unchanged during storage, transmission, and usage, not involving modification to the information. Steps must be taken to ensure data cannot be altered by unauthorized people, for example, in a breach of confidentiality. All right, so integrity, there you go. Make sure the data hasn't been messed with, hasn't been modified, right, by unauthorized parties. And that's going to come into effect when you start using, like, hashes and such. All right, last one here is availability. In order for data to be useful, it must be available and accessible by the user. The main concern in the CIA triad is that the information should be available when, when authorized users need to access it. And this comes down to stuff like ransomware, right? That will greatly affect your availability to access files. You can't access them if they've been healed with ransomware, right? Also, in regards to they're talking about system uptime down here, and so something like maybe a DDoS attack is attacking your website, right? That's going to affect your availability. Um, also, maybe password spraying. If, if your accounts are getting constantly locked out, that's going to affect availability for sp specific users and such. You can see the rest here. All right, let's go down to the questions area. What element of the CIA triad ensures that data cannot be altered by unauthorized people? All right, well, as explained above, that's going to be, should be integrity. So there you go. Uh, what element of the CIA triad ensures that data is available? Well, that's availability, as we just read. All right, and then what element of the CIA triad ensures that data is only accessed by authorized people. Well, that's going to be confidentiality. All right, let's continue. 
to task number three here, principles of privileges. It is vital to administrate and correctly define the various levels of access to an information technology system individuals require. The levels of access given to individuals are determined on two primary factors. The individual's role slash function within the organization, the sensitivity of the information being stored on the system. Two key concepts are used to assign and manage the access rights of individuals. Privilege identity management, also known as PIM, and privilege access management, or PAM for short. Initially, these two concepts can seem to overlap. However, they are different from one another. PIM is used to translate a user's role within an organization into an access role on a system. Whereas PAM is the management of privileges a system's access role has, amongst other things. What is essential when discussing privilege and access controls is the principle of least privilege. Very important, folks, here. This is where a lot of organizations get wrong. Simply, users should be given the minimal amount of privileges and only those that are absolutely necessary for, the, for them to perform their duties. Other people should be able to trust what people write to. All right, they're talking about here that not every user needs to be a local administrator on their own machine, okay? That's, that could be bad news for your organization if every user is a local admin. Because if those credentials get compromised somehow, then attacker has full control over that machine, and then they could just traverse through your environment by using that user's account. As we previously mentioned, PAM incorporates more than assigning access. It also encompasses uh, enforcing security policies such as password management, auditing policies, and reducing the attack surface a system faces. All right, let's answer some questions here. Talking about PIM, what is PIM? So let's go ahead and copy and paste this down here. Privilege Identity Management. What does the PAM stand for? Privilege Access Management. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this down here. There we go. If you wanted to manage privileges, a system access role, what methodology would you use? All right, so they're talking about systems access roles, and that should be PAM. Talking about that, All right? And if you wanted to create a system role that is based on user's role and responsibilities, remember translating user's roles and responsibilities into a system role, that's going to be PIM, as explained up above. So there we go. Now let's continue on to task number four here. Security models continued. Before discussing security models further, let's recall the three elements of the CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. We've previously outlined what these elements are and their importance. However, there is a formal way of achieving this. According to a security model, any system or piece of technology storing information is called an information system, which is how we will reference systems and devices in this task. Let's explore some popular and effective security models used to achieve the three elements of the CIA triad. The bell La padula model is used to achieve confidentiality. This model has a few assumptions, such as the organization's hierarchical structure it is used in, where everyone's responsibilities slash roles are well-defined. This model works by granting access to pieces of data called objects on a strictly need-to-know basis. This model uses the no write down, no read up advantages. You can see the advantages there, you can see the disadvantages there, so be sure to read through here. Now these models are on exams as well, such as the, C, the uh, CISSP. All right, so you have to pretty much learn and understand what these, use, what these models are used for and like the differences and such because it may appear on exams so this is good stuff here so be sure to be, uh, read through here all right the next one is going to talk about the the biba model the biba model is arguably the equivalent of the bella P padula model for the integrity of the cia triad so be sure to read and understand this information here we're going to scroll down here all right see the beta or biba model is used in organizations or situations where integrity is more important than confidentiality. For example, in software development, developers may only have access to the code that is necessary for the job. They may not need access to critical pieces of information such as databases, etc. All right, now let's go ahead and answer some questions below. Hey everybody, just a quick little blurb here. As you can see here, most people that view my channel are not subscribers. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're enjoying the video, please consider hitting the like button. It helps get me in the algorithm, help spread the good word out there, helps bring more people and increase our glorious community here. All right, I'm all about helping out others. I know what it's like to come up in cybersecurity or even try to get into cybersecurity and not knowing where to look. I'm just having this channel up so I can help out other people. All right, that's all I got. What is the name of the model that uses the rule can't read up?
can't read down. Well, that's going to be the Bell-Law Padula model, as discussed above. What is the name of the model that uses the rule can't read up, can't read down? That's going to be the Biba model. If you're in the military, what security model would you use? That's going to be the Bell-Law Padula model. Remember, they were talking about this was need-to-know basis, right? And if you were a software developer, what security model would you or would the company prefer or perhaps use? That's going to be the beta model as discussed in that last um, sentence here, right? When integrity is more important than confidentiality. So let's continue on to task number five, where we're going to be discussing threat modeling and incident response. Threat modeling is the process of reviewing, improving, and testing the security protocols in place in an organization's information technology infrastructure and services. A critical stage of the threat modeling process is identifying likely threats that an application or system may face, the vulnerabilities a system or application may be vulnerable to. The threat modeling process is very similar to a risk assessment made in workplaces for employees and customers. The principles all will turn to preparation, identification, and mitigations in review, as you can see here in this little uh, chart, flow chart thing here. It is, however, a complex process that needs constant review and discussion with a dedicated team. An effective threat model includes the following. Threat intelligence, asset identification, mitigation capabilities, risk assessment. To help with this, there are frameworks such as stride, spoofing, identity, tampering with data, repudiation, threats, um, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privileges, and PASTA, process for attack, simulation, and threat analysis. InfoSec never tasted so good. Let's detail Stride below. Stride, authored by two Microsoft security researchers in 1999, is still very relevant today. Stride includes six main principles, which I have detailed in the table below. All right, so I'm just going to look over some of this here, not all of it, so be sure to pause the video and read through this yourself or check out the room yourself and read through everything here. All right, some of this stuff is going to be on exams as well. I'm pretty sure. This is part of what you need to know for like the CISSP exam, and probably some other ones out there as well. Spoofing. This principle requires you to authenticate requests and users assessing a system. Spoofing involves a malicious party falsely identifying itself as another. Access keys such as API keys or signatures via encryption help remediate this threat. Tampering. By providing anti-tampering measures to a system or application, you help provide integrity to the data. Data that is accessed must be kept integral and accurate. For example, shops use seals on food products. And you got repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, elevation of privilege. A breach of security is known as an incident. And despite all rigorous threat models and secure system designs, incidents do happen. Actions taken to resolve and remediate the threat are known as incident response, aka IR, and are a whole career path in cybersecurity. Correct. Incidents are classified using a rating of urgency and impact. Urgency will be determined by the type of attack face, where the impact will be determined by the effective system and what impact that system has on business operations. You can see it here in this little uh, chart area here. Urgency, impact, high, medium, low, high, medium, low, et cetera, et cetera. Incident is responded to by a computer, or, sorry, a computer security incident response team, CSERT. And they go by many different names here. All right, This is just one example. It might be a different example per organization. All right. At my organization, and just call it like the IR team or CERT team, which is a prearranged group of employees with technical knowledge about the systems and or current incident to successfully solve an incident. These steps are often referred to as the six phases of incident response that takes place listed in the table below. All right, once again, be sure to read over all this information here. I'm just going to highlight a few items here. Preparation. Do we have the resources and plans in place to deal with the security incident? Identification has the threat and the threat actor been correctly identified in order for us to respond to containment. Can the threat slash security incident be contained to prevent other systems or users from being impacted? You got eradication, recovery, and lessons learned. Now, sometimes lessons learned will be called something else like RLI, which is uh, review, learn, and improve. So that must be like some new terminology these days. But I've always known this as lessons learned or a post-mortem report, something like that. All right, answer some questions. What model outlines spoofing? What does the acronym IR stand for? You are tasked with adding some measures to an application to improve the integrity of data. What stride principle is this? An attacker has penetrated your organization's security and stolen data 
It is your task to return the organization to business as usual. What incident response stage is this? Okay, the first one here, what model identifies spoofing? So if you scroll back up here, they start talking about spoofing. It looks like Stride started talking about that. So let's go ahead and put that in there. Stride, NIR is uh, incident response, all right? Incident response. And you're tasked improving uh, integrity data. What Stride principle is this? So let's go ahead and look at this. All right, integrity data. So that's going to be, looks like tampering, right? So let's go ahead and type the, or paste this down here below. And an attacker has penetrated organizations. Throwing data, tasks, uh, organizations back to business as usual. What incident response stage is this? All right, so that's going to be recovery, right? Because you have to recover all the systems and the network and all that stuff. Let's go, let's go ahead and plug that in there and wrap this up. All right, folks, that's pretty much it. So be sure to learn and understand these principles that are taught in this room here. These are very important. All right. Now, there wasn't really any practical application in this room, but this is some good information that's going to come back in your cybersecurity career or even just in IT in general. All right. You're going to be coming across all this stuff here, most likely, depending on whatever organization you work at. It's going to vary by organization. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. If you enjoyed the video, had gotten any type of uh, good information from the video, be sure to hit that like button, comment below your thoughts and opinions on the information discussed in the video. As always, thank you all for watching. Have a nice day, and I will see you later.